now screen is visible huh? screen yes sir okay so uh, yeah uh, good evening to one and all uh, today we will discuss a topic that is a uh, consequences of heteroscodasticity so previous day uh, we discussed what is meant by heteroscodasticity so what is the nature of heteroscodasticity and uh, at the end we discussed about what are the causes of heteroscodasticity so today uh, it is uh, we will discuss there is a consequences of heteroscodasticity for example when there is a heteroscodasticity happens so what will we will look at for example what are the consequences are there so when we are getting a heteroscodasticity problem Yeah, the main consequences here, see, uh, when you run the wireless method, method, nothing but when you are estimating the wireless method, so you will get some estimation values. That is the wireless estimators are no longer blue, are no longer blue. What is the blue best linear unbiased estimator? So for example, when you are applying the wireless method, to the regression analysis, so the estimators can, uh, are no longer blue, nothing but whatever we estimate the values, so the values may not accurate. That is called, we will, we will not satisfy the blue property. That is a best linear unbiased estimator. So why? Because they are no longer efficient. Because they, they, uh, they are no longer efficient. So the regression prediction will be inefficient. For example, whatever we will estimate the values. So the estimate values are no longer efficient, but the values are not efficient. Okay. So in that case only the predictions will be inefficient will be inefficient then the second one the second consequence is because of inconsistency of the all the covariance matrix for example there is inconsistency of the covariance of the estimated regression coefficients for example see when you are estimating the model so we before estimating the model we need to check whether the, whether the particular model has been suffering from multicollinearity or not how we can check from uh, correlation matrix or there is a covariance matrix so when you are estimating that such kind of things, uh, you need to take care that is the inconsistency of the covariance matrix of the estimated regression coefficients that is called beta one, beta two, beta three, that are called regression coefficients. So we need to look at that whether there is any relationship between the uh, among them or not. The test uh, test of hypothesis that is a t test. How we can test the uh, whether the particular uh, coefficient is efficient or significant, insignificant? We can use a t test. So as I told you in the second module, t test, t test is equal t value is equal to coefficient of beta by standard error of beta. So coefficient of beta nothing but estimated by beta value divided by standard error of beta value. So then if a t value is more than 1.96, we will say the 95% uh, significance, nothing but the particular coefficient value is significant at 95%. Okay, or 0 0.05 level of significance. And we can use that uh, F test also, overall significance of the model. So we can use F test for the overall significance of the regression model. So when we are uh, testing such kind of things, uh, T test, F test, so which are no longer valid. For example, in order to know that uh, whether the particular model has been suffering from particular uh, atmospheric problem, so whatever we test it, that with the test are no longer valid. Nothing but so when you are keeping on testing uh, such kind of test, so whatever we get some values the values should not uh, valid in the further. The third one, ordinary least square estimation estimators are not efficient. So as I told you in the earlier, OLS, OLS nothing but ordinary least square estimators not efficient. So when you are applying that OLS method for the regression, so we will not get uh, efficient values of the parameters. Then usual form, uh, formulas gives incorrect standard errors for the least squares. For example, see when you are using a different formulas, we will get a incorrect standard error values. Nothing but standard of beta value, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. So whatever we get the standard of beta value or beta 2 value or beta 3 value. So we will get a wrong values because when you are applying different formulas to get the t values. Then fourth one. The confidence intervals and hypothesis test based on usual standard errors are wrong. So how we can test hypothesis as I told here, t test, t is equal to coefficient of beta by standard of beta. So here, see, when you are testing hypothesis, the test, uh, the hypothesis test based on what? 
usual standard errors are, are wrong. When the standards are wrong only, you will get different values. When standard is good, you will get accurate values. Am I right, dear students? Uh, are you understood these points, four points? Srikant, Maheshwari, and Monica, other people, Jaipal. Okay, sir, clear, sir. Then, for example, what are the consequences of using wireless in the presence of heterosclerosis? capacity? For example, when there is a heterosclerosis problem is there, when you're using OLS method. See, the existence of heterosclerosis in the array term of an equation violates the classical assumptions. That is called uh, CLRM. So, as I told you in the uh, causes of heterosclerosis, when we are violating the uh, assumptions of CLRM, so we'll get heterosclerosis problem, right? So, I, the estimation of the equation with OLS has at least three consequences. So, at least, for example, when you're estimating the model by using OLS method, you will get at least three consequences, nothing but three problems you are going to get. Let us see the estimate, OLS estimation still gives unbiased coefficient estimates, but they are no longer blue. They will get, we will get the values of beta values, but when you are going to test that uh, hypothesis, uh, they are going to provide a wrong values of standard errors. When they are providing the standard, uh, wrong standard error values, so we will get a different t values. So if the, we will get t values, for example, two. So when that standard error value is very less, okay. If the standard is very very less compared with the coefficient, so we will get more than two. So when you are getting the t value is more than two, it is statistically significant at ninety five percent. Okay. So when standard error value is uh, wrong, then we are going to get a heterosclerosis problem. Uh, this simply uh, this imply that. If we still use OLS in the presence of atrocity, for example, if even when there is a atrocity problem is there in our model, when you are using OLS, our standard errors could be inappropriate. Inappropriate. Simple here, uh, when we are getting atrocity problem, we don't want to use the OLS model. Okay. So see, simple, we can use the other models. So and any inferences we make could be misleading. Whatever say, uh, as I told you, if t value is more than two. We can conclude that the independent variable is influencing significantly. We can conclude like this. For example, the, uh, the standard is wrong. We are going to conclude. But when we are uh, come to know that the standard is uh, standard values are wrong, then only we will not conclude by using the OLS method. Nothing but whatever will be the uh, results, or uh, when you are interpreting the results, so you are going to mislead the theory, or you are going to mislead the policy frame or policy option. So that is the thing that uh, inferences we make could be misleading. And whether the standard errors, whether the standard errors calculated using the usual formal are too big or too small will depend upon the form of atrocity. For example, see, as I told you that when standard error value is very less or too big, what will happen will depend on the form of heteroscedacity, which form of heteroscedacity is existing in our model. So mainly you can simply think about this uh, when you are estimating the wireless method, you are going to get standard values are wrong. When standard values are wrong, you are going to get different uh, T values. So on the base of T value, if you conclude, uh, your uh, results may mislead to the other public or other people or theory. Okay, uh, that is I want to say about, about this uh, from this. Uh, the next, uh, in the presence of heteroscedacity, the variance of OLS estimators are not provided by the usual OLS formulas. See, when there is a presence of heteroscedacity, the variance of OLS estimators are not provided by the usual OLS formulas. See, when we are estimating the model, the OLS, so they will not provide that variance of the estimators. So on the base of variance only, we will come to know that whether the which way, which variable has a more variance, which variable has a less variance. So as I, as I told you that in the semester one or semester two, I think, so if the variance is low, it is consistency. It is very desirable. As I told you in the earlier, when the minimum variance is a desirable, maximum variance is not desirable. Okay. So that is the case uh, when we are getting minimum variance that is a desirable. 
but we uh, persist in the using usual wireless formulas but t and f test based on them can be highly misleading highly misleading so as i told you that uh, f and uh, t test f test so when you get wrong results uh, wrong estimation so definitely uh, on the base of t value we are going to conclude so whatever you are going to conclude uh, that can be mislead the others and uh, theory also and uh, resulting in uh, erroneous conclusion nothing but erroneous nothing but spurious results you can say that uh, wrong results so have you understood about this consequences of uh, atros quadacity dear students maheshwari okay, jaypal manasa saraswati monika srikant supriya are the many have you hello hello yes, sir ha ah, adha maine antunna then see what you are going to conclude see one of the assumption of wireless regression is that errors have constant variance that is called atros quadacity okay when there is the errors are have the same co constant that is the homos quadacity if the errors have not constant variance that is called atros quadacity okay so with atros quadacity the variance is not constant as i told you whereas our variance of the error term is not constant that is called atros quadacity so more common in cross sectional data than time series as i told you in the previous day so we will get atros quadacity problem in cross sectional data that is a more common in cross sectional data than time series data so even if atros quadacity is present or suspected so whatever conclusion we draw or inferences we make may be very misleading when we are getting a atros quadacity problem so when we are getting atros quadacity problem we don't want to draw a conclusion so if you draw a conclusion so if you make a statement so the statement may give the misleading or it may may be very misleading okay so these are the conclusion i would like to say uh, about that consequences of atros quadacity so is it clear that uh, what is the consequences of atros quadacity yes sir 